Captain's Log, Stardate 45385.2. The Vigilance has arrived at Planet Vita 2 to assist with an ambitious and experimental new procedure to rid its atmosphere of dangerous radiogenic particles. These increasingly harmful pollutants are the unfortunate legacy left to the Vitans following centuries of war on their world. And so with your help and the new Voron field technology, we project that we'll achieve a 98% reduction in the particle count. Finally, our world will be healthy again. It's an impressive technique that can only work here on Vita 2, due to the unique composition of the planet's atmosphere. That's right. When the satellites generate the Voron field, the valiant particles that occur naturally here will bind to the pollutants. Once they're joined, it's a simple matter to disperse these off into space, and they'll take the radiogenic particles along with them. Fascinating. And so how does the Vigilance assist in this endeavour? With raw power, Captain. In more recent years, we Vitans have finally been enjoying a somewhat fragile peace after so much turmoil. Unfortunately, though, a consequence of such prolonged devastation has meant all our recent efforts have been rooted in the rather mundane but necessary tasks needed to sustain a population. What Brother Yeshua is too proud to say, Captain, is that whilst we've been able to repurpose existing satellites to sustain the Voron field, we simply don't have anything comparable in power to a Federation starship such as yours. And the energy output needed to first generate the field is something we simply aren't capable of producing ourselves. Indeed. Well, subject to my Chief Engineer's approval, we'll be delighted to help. Well, you've got it. Brother Yeshua and I will control the process from the Vigilance. Commander Boltzmann and Brother Kost will travel by a shuttle to the far side of the planet and monitor the field symmetry from orbit. Jealous be praised, Captain. I humbly thank you on behalf of all Vitans for your accommodation on this matter. 25 years ago, Genites and Paisians working together in this way would have been unheard of. Indeed. Oh, we've come a long way, sister. Well, Starfleet is always open to assisting where it can. And making your world safe again for all its inhabitants is certainly a worthy cause. This is a positive day for us all, sister. Genus, bless this mission and bring our planet a long and safe future. Genus, be praised. Praise, Praise Genus. Genus. And now, Captain, we're very much looking forward to our tour. Of course, it should be my pleasure. Commander, may I have a moment? <laughs> Is this about tomorrow night's dinner by any chance? It all arrived this morning. Safely. It did, that's great. Probably the finest anger and food of mine. Well, I'm really looking forward to it. Me too. Happy anniversary. To us both. I'll see you tomorrow. All right, initiating satellite startup procedure. Synchronous orbit established, thrusters at station keeping. Boltzmann to vigilance, we're in position. Acknowledge, Boltzmann. We're almost ready to proceed here. Stand by. Incredible. Very few of my people get to venture into space. You must see views like this all the time. Tell me, do you ever become numb to it? Not at all. Views like this, missions of this kind, are exactly why I joined Starfleet. May I ask a question, Brother Cost? Of course, Commander. What caused the war on Vita 2? Ah. Well, it happened over 500 years ago. We were led by the one true prophet, Genus Pazian. One day he vanished mysteriously, and our ancestors split into two factions, Genites and Pazians, each blaming the other for his disappearance, which created a schism and then eventually war. Many civilizations have a history of war at their heart. Earth is no different but it's the future that's important now. Indeed. His will prevails. 
What of your own world, Commander? Are you a religious people? Long ago, various faiths did dominate our world. Governments, wars, art, everything fell under its influence to some degree. But as science progressed, many began to see religions as anachronistic. Reminders only of the wars and divisions between people. And today, do humans still view them in that light? Old fables good only for sowing division? Thankfully not. In the fullness of time, humans came to acknowledge that, in many ways, religions are the foundation of our civilization. For us to excise them would be to deny our own history. Hmm. I see. And once humanity ventured out into the galaxy, we realized just how integral faith had been in our own development. Understanding ourselves helped us to understand those we encountered. Given Viton scientific progress and the horrendous war, are there those on your world that feel their faith is supplanted? Supplanted? I mean, given the years of bloodshed, perhaps science is the way forward for your people. For us, science and religion don't preclude one another as they seem to for you. Janus himself was a scientist of sorts. His will is our core, it's who we are, the air we breathe. It is said that he had written the final chapter, teachings that would bring everlasting harmony. It's a tragedy those words were lost. For Vitans, religion isn't just some rhetoric, but a whole way of being. Of being, of life, of genus. Hmm. All right, deflector assembly charged. Power wave guides looking good. How are the satellites, Brother Yeshua? Network active. Voronometer standing by. Okay, deflector control to bridge. We're ready down here, Captain. Very well, Lieutenant. Proceed at your discretion. Good luck, everybody. Thank you, Captain. Whatever the outcome here today, it shall be Genesis' will. Vigilance to shuttle. We're ready to proceed. We're standing by, Lieutenant. Good luck, everyone. Genesis be with us. Thank you. Sensors at full resolution. Initiating energy transfer to the network in five seconds. Four, three, two, one. Initiating energy pulse. Working. Satellites are online and energy absorption is looking good. Confirmed. The Vaughan field is forming and stabilizing. Janus be praised. It's wonderful. Congratulations, brother. Thank you. What's that? Unknown. I can't get. The vigilance is firing phases. Computer, run alert! The war will never be done. Our genesis is the only one. Medical emergency and deflector control. Take him to the captain. Lieutenant Phillips, report. Stand by. Several of the ship's systems were disrupted when he took control. It seems that the phaser fire interacted with the Voron field. Very unusual readings, Captain. The 
phases missed their intended target. The Genite city of Deca is unharmed. Why would Brother Yeshua do this? I hope I'm about to find that out. Is there an update on the missing shuttle? Our phaser beam was disrupted by Valion particles. The energy was then focused on the shuttle like a lightning rod. It's gone. Jennifer's gone. But not lost, Lieutenant. There was no explosion, no debris. That's true. The sensors show that a kind of field formed at their coordinates and expanded via the satellite network to engulf the whole atmosphere. Does this field pose a threat? I don't think so. The field's already dispersing, and further scans may reveal the shuttle's whereabouts. Understood. You have your work cut out, Lieutenant. <coughs> You're right. I think so. No. It can't be. What is it? The Vorum field. It must have... Where are we? According to the coordinates, by two. Oh. Janus be praised. By to two, approximately 500 years ago. Captain's log, supplemental. Brother Yeshua has sabotaged our mission, injuring Sister Zora and causing the shuttle to vanish. Lieutenant Phillips has launched an investigation, whilst I try to get some answers of my own. Such anger, Captain, but it doesn't become you. What you really like to know is why I attack the Genites. My world was lost a long time ago when the Pazan leaders appeased our enemies, the Genites. This so-called peace is not Genesis as well. The war will never be done while we share our world with them. They're not our brothers. We must live together as brothers, or perish together as fools. What kind of person would take our offer of help and turn it into murder for some twisted belief? Twisted belief? Huh. You'll never understand our faith and tradition. Tradition? A tradition of war? If Janus wills it, then war is a good thing. No, we shall strive for peace. Genesis will. What does that mean? Are they your thoughts? Were you born innately with such ideas? Or are they the words of a father, or mother, or priest, imprinting their ideology on a child? You see the value of faith as a means of solace, for moral guidance, but not when it involves the taking of lives. The Genites murdered generations of my people, stole our land, forced us to the outskirts of the planet. But surely that is the past. Sister Zora explained an amnesty is formed. Peace shall prevail. Moreover, involving Starfleet potentially ignites conflict between our peoples. Your crimes are legion. And your hypocrisy is sickening, Captain, all the more that you can't see it. Your ship is equipped with weapons far more destructive than ours, and there's been no shortage of wars to wage with them. Klingons, Romulans, Cardassians, all victims of your peaceful federation. You claim to embrace diversity and respect other ways of life, but the truth is that unless a species wears your uniform and follows your rules, you'll happily turn your weapons upon them. The diversity you see amongst my crew is nothing more than a consequence of people sharing values. Cherished values which sometimes must be fought for. It certainly isn't evidence of conquered peoples forced into servitude. Despite your actions today, I still choose to believe that your people like countless others we've encountered, will ultimately reject petty hatred and embrace peace and progress, just as we have. And there it is. Unless people follow your view of the world, you give yourself license to dismiss them out of hand for having the wrong values. 
After passing that judgment, yours was easily justified. At least I'm honest in my beliefs, Captain. After our atmosphere is restored, millions of Paisians will rise up and wipe out the Genites once and for all. You failed in your attempt to destroy the Genite city. You will be punished for what you've done. If Janus wills it. Lieutenant Mills, escort this man to the brig. Well, Janus be praised, we were lucky to survive. The underside of the hull's badly damaged. For the cost? For the cost! For the cost! Don't touch him! You know this man? Yes. It's Janus Paisian. A prophet. Can you be sure? Yes. His likeness is in every school, every temple. I need to check his vitals. We need to go. There's a radiation leak from our throttle assembly. It's interacting with the Valion particles on our hull. He took the initial burst, but we'll be safe inside the shuttle. <coughs> Brother Cost, it will break down all organic matter in the area. <coughs> Including this scroll! <laughs> Captain Keller. Go ahead, Lieutenant. We have more information on the shuttle. You better come down here. I'm on my way. Incredible. This is ancient Viton, but I can read it. This is the final chapter. The holy core of Genus! It's so simple! <laughs> Th these divine words, if preached, they would have maintained unity. But we have killed him. If so, we are responsible for 500 years of brutal war! Past. Are you sure? Yes, Captain. Our phaser fire in the Voron field caused a temporal aperture to open. Understood. Just how far back are we talking? Well, there's no way to tell. But we could send a signal back through the aperture. Go on. Well, a modulating carrier wave could deliver a simple message. They wouldn't be able to reply. But if they're alive, it could help to guide them back. Excellent work. We have to do this now, though, Captain. In around 20 minutes, the chronotonic field will have dispersed and the aperture will collapse. We'll have no way to trace them. They'll be lost. Then let's get to it. Listen, brother. This is not the answer. This is not your fault. Whatever happened on the vigilance was out of our control. Science and logic brought peace to your world because of rational men like you. So be rational now. I am a person of faith. You were the one that was suggesting that faith was a thing of the past. I meant no disrespect. You're both rational and with faith, perhaps, just perhaps, this is how things are supposed to be. I cannot accept that our crash started the 500 year war. This was not how it's supposed to be. Look, it reads that history is unfolding correctly. Our memories, these records both show the timelines unaffected. We haven't altered the past. We're part of it. Just cannot accept that this is Correct. The science is correct. Have faith in it also, brother. Keller to Portsmouth. 
Yeshua sabotaged the mission. His fanatics refused to accept peace. There's a chronotonic aperture in orbit linking our time frames, but it's dissipating rapidly. You have approximately 20 minutes to travel back through it, or you'll be trapped in the past. Our sensor readings are attached. Good luck. Yeshua. I need your help to get this ship into orbit. Uh, almost. The radiation leaks affecting the thrusters. Janus, I understand now. Please help us return with the scroll. Brother, we have to leave it here. The temple director was clear. I don't care about your directive. This is the final chapter. I'd rather die than leave it here. All right, fine. Unless Janice can help us get the ship off the ground, it won't matter anyway. I can only hope they've received the message. I'm going to assume they did. They still have two minutes. Hold fast, Lieutenant. Jennifer? Jennifer, this is Dale. If you can hear this, please hurry. You've only got two minutes until... Remember our date? I've got the wine cooling. Please. Structural integrity is at 30%. Our makeshift repairs won't last forever. Radiation levels are critical. Hurry. Field is dispersed, Captain. She's gone. Why did you steer us away? I had no choice. Look at these readings. If we returned, our radiation leak interacting with Vorons could easily have triggered a chain reaction in your atmosphere. We would have killed everything on the surface. Then the final chapter can never be read. It's over. Maybe not. I have an idea. Captain? There's a Starfleet signal being detected on the planet's third moon. Helm, take us there. Full impulse. No shuttle pod. Just a message buoy. Why didn't we detect its signal before? It was programmed to only start transmitting a moment ago. There's a brief log in the memory buffer. It's from Brother Cost to all Vitans. Bring it aboard. From our readings, it's been on the moon for approximately 500 years. Play the recording, Lieutenant. This is Commander Jennifer Boltzmann recording. Following Yeshua's sabotage, we crashed 500 years in the past and we sustained radiation leak. We couldn't risk returning. We would have destroyed the entire atmosphere. 
It's incredible, I know, but our crash caused Jenna's Pazian's death. <laughs> no, this is a fake. This is a trick. Quiet! I repeat, the sabotage killed Jenna's Pazian. I have Brother Cost here with me. This is a message for all Vitans. I have left the final chapter in the buoy. Let the words on this parchment show you the right path. If you can hear this, Yeshua, I forgive you. And may Janus forgive you too. He will be punished for what he's done. Captain. Lieutenant, forgive me. Make sure that's forgive me. Captain's Log, Supplemental. It is with a heavy heart that I must record the sad loss of Commander Boltzmann and Brother Cost. Their brave sacrifice no doubt saved the Vitans' planet, but their final act also seems sure to bring about a lasting peace. Dissemination of the final chapter has caused a remarkable transformation on their world already. How fitting that this momentous occasion be marked also by the successful cleansing of their atmosphere. Your commander and brother Cost are heroes. Their courage and good deeds will never be forgotten by the Vitam people. Real peace is finally here. Come in. Lieutenant. I thought you'd be resting. I'm fine, Captain. Jennifer would want me to finish the mission. And our latest scan shows that the atmosphere is now completely free from radiogenic particles. Well, that's wonderful. Thank you, Lieutenant. I still struggle to believe that Yeshua's actions caused your holy war in the first place. What a twisted coincidence that they were thrown back to that exact moment in time. It's beyond logic. Indeed. Beyond logic lies faith, Captain. <laughs>